Hi there, listener. You're about to experience Tadpog. Tyler and Dave play old games, and there will be plenty of game talk, but also copious amounts of crude, off-color, offensive, and immature speech. So if you are of a rather sensitive humor constitution, we're just letting you know what you're in for with this show. It has games. It has jokes. You know, just games and jokes. Take the games, take the jokes, and have a good time. Hello, Internet. Welcome to another Tadpog podcast. It's a show that happens twice a week where two old guys stare into Eisenhower's pre-established pipes to see a mustachioed cleric on the other side and talk about old games. It's Original Flavor Wednesday, so that means we are doing our second original continuation of a series, top, playing through Dorkley's top 25 and 64 games. This week, we're going to be talking about, oh, just the glory that is the 23rd ranked game, Star Wars Shadows of the Empire. And we have to, we had to, go back to our resident Star Wars expert, Grandmaster Wiley Ammons. Hey, Wiley. Hello there, Tad Pog Nation. You're looking really nice on this holodeck we've got on the table. You're coming in, you're coming in <laughs> crisp and those, clear. Those Patreon pledges coming pretty yeah. solid. Got our own <laughs> holodeck uh, machine. It's pretty good. It's pretty we're, good. We're, I look good in, be- in blue hue. <laughs> yes. Well, we went for the green model. Is that cool? Oh, yeah. That's you're, fine. That's fine. It's more environmentally friendly. Many Bothans died to get us this holodeck. So. <laughs> 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 what? I know what those are. Yeah. I don't know what those are. <laughs> They're like werewolf camels, kind of. What? <laughs> they're like werewolf camels. Werewolf camels? So they look like. They look like if. Um, so the camels that turn into wolves on a full moon? Yeah. It's and they're really good, good spies. Good. They're like the. They're like the halflings of the Star Wars universe. But ugh, that's not really a good way of putting it. I mean, which, which, <laughs> part, of, which part of them's the Cynthia, like, mm. civilized part? The werewolf or the camel? No, they're like that all the time. They just kind of look like. Imagine Joe Camel, right? Uh-huh. Imagine Joe Camel, but he's Teen Wolf. Got poon face. That, okay. He's got poon face. That is a. That's what a Bothan looks like. <laughs> okay. And they're usually they're usually spies. Hmm. And that's a line in one of the movies. The the Death Star information. The schematics. Hmm. Uh, Leia says that many Bothans died. Yep. To give us this information. Something okay. like that. Okay. I'm paraphrasing. Also, I think it was Leia. <laughs> I think I think so too. Pretty sure it yeah. was. Pretty sure. It was. I'm glad you could confirm that for me. <laughs> You're welcome. So how? Welcome. So you you still haven't watched these movies, huh? No, okay. no. I think it only behooves us that I don't. Yeah. Since we have to play these Star Wars games, and I've got opinions about Star Wars games. Yeah. But f- plausible deniability. <laughs> <laughs> but first, I'm your beard host Tyler, and Zach had a call the other day about a regretful recall, and I couldn't think of anything at the moment. So the other night, I was. I had all, all my medications on. I was about to fall asleep, so I'm kind of out of it. And I suddenly, like, I get one. So, like, I fumble for my phone. I'm like, anytime I get one, I have to... I know I'll forget it. So I can't just, like, okay, that'll be my story. I have to text Dave immediately so I have a record of it. So I text Dave, like... I, I deciphered what I meant, but it was mostly nonsense that I text Dave. I've got this text message in front of me. It's almost like you're trying to summon Cthulhu. <laughs> <laughs> I've got... From Tyler, Sunday, 2.55 a.m. Regentful, that's with two T's, <laughs> recall for not not understanding what sucking a golf ball, though a garden hose meant before using it in Cove Ein Versatin. Mm-hmm. Yep. So... Is it a fashion designer? Instead of the Kobayashi Maru, my <laughs> yeah. middle school had us do the Kobay Versatin, which is another test to go to high school. <laughs> The Bothans invented the Kobayashi Maru. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, them and the Time Lords I believe, together. <laughs> I believe that. I could get on board for that. They had to cross the Dothraki Sea in order to do it. <laughs> <laughs> you are making so many nerds angry right now. <laughs> oh, man. Now, I can't even fucking think of the right thing I want to say right now, that they summoned their, summoned their Patronus that led them all across the Dothraki Sea. <laughs> yes. <laughs> But here, here is that story. Um, I was in sixth grade, and I think I'd been over at like my older cousin's house, and I'd seen the first half of 
uh, Full Metal Jacket. Didn't really get a lot of it. Most of it threw, flew over my head. I just thought, you know, uh, this, this is pretty funny. This is a pretty funny movie. I this guess guy will be Kingpin one day. It's a great comedy. <laughs> this is a great comedy, this Full Metal Jacket. And um, there's at one point where he says, I think the drill sergeant you know, says, I bet you could suck a golf ball through a garden hose. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That flies over my head. I'm just think that's a weird compliment to give somebody. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, for someone to have that kind of you know lung strength, lung capacity, that's pretty impressive. I don't yeah. see where he's going. You could there. be an astronaut. <laughs> <laughs> see, so I I didn't I had no clue. So I remember I was in uh, I was in class with somebody and we got in an argument. And what grade was this? Sixth grade. Okay. And this guy is this other kid is cutting me down, and I'm getting mad, and he's. I mean, he's, he's coming down on me or whatever, and then I'm just like, yeah, well, I could suck a golf ball through a golf <laughs> <laughs> And it just goes, everything just goes silent. The record scratches? <laughs> <laughs> and he just kind of looks at me, he's like, well, I, I bet you could, I guess. And I'm just like, yeah, yeah, be impressed. I bet I could do that. I see your face. <laughs> you bitch. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. Brian. So then it wasn't until many years later I remembered like, oh, huh. <laughs> that that wasn't great to say. Has he ever Facebook messaged you like recently? We we get we got to be we were friends like a oh. week after that, but yeah. <laughs> he was yeah. also my running mate when I ran for fourth grade class president. Yeah? Yeah, he was my vice president. Okay. Was your slogan Sing off all the guard noses. I'll suck them all. No problem. At your rallies, people just have hoses and they're swinging over their heads like lassos. <laughs> throw, throwing golf balls like rice whenever I wa- walk out. And their dicks are out also. Forgot that. <laughs> Teachers strangely, inter- strangely interested, students strangely confused. <laughs> What's up, Internet. I'm Dave. I'm your bespectacled host. And I, Wiley, fortunately, reminded me that I had a story that I was going to tell in a previous episode um, that I changed my intro story. And I feel like I may have told this story on the show before, but when I graduated from Murray, from Murray State University, I got a job at the newspaper in Paducah. So I didn't, we weren't ready to move. Nikki and I didn't really have any money saved up to, um, make a deposit on an apartment or anything like that. So, um, and she had her job there in Murray. So what that meant was a lot of waking up at five 30 and driving to Paducah, uh, to get to work. And, um, I would do this every day, uh, Monday through Friday and it's about a 45 minute drive. Um, so, I mean, that's, that's a, that's a good commute, especially for 2004. Uh, I am, not yet introduced to podcasts. I do not have an iPod or any kind of device. So it's pretty much just CDs or radio. So what it, what that translates to is a lot of going to OC remix and downloading all the final fantasy six, uh, <laughs> nice. tracks that they have loading it up on a CD and just putting it in the car and playing that. Um, so the problem with that is I hear it enough. I hear it every day, every day. And it starts to get old. I should throw something new in. And I notice that I'm getting, I'm getting tired because I'm waking up early in the morning. I'm driving. I'm going to work. I'm working. I'm driving home. And then, of course, I'm staying up all night and playing video games mm-hmm. instead of going to bed. <laughs> it's pretty much what I do now just without the driving. <laughs> uh, I still haven't learned. Uh, so what that means is after about three or four weeks of this, uh, I'm just... I'm, I'm tired all the time. I'm exhausted all the time, uh, which doesn't mix well with all this driving that I'm doing because I will straight <laughs> up take a nap while I'm driving. Yeah. Like I just <laughs> like I just will do that. And I don't even have to be like really tired. As long as I'm just a little tired. If I'm a little tired, I can I can be on the interstate and just like I'll find myself closing my like you're, oh you're like kidding like that. Yeah. I can just put her in the car and drive around. She's gonna fall asleep. <laughs> my blinks, they get longer and longer to the point where put David his carrier, put him in the car, drive him around, he'll fall asleep. That <laughs> would have been bad. I prefer the crate. Okay. I feel more, I feel more secure than the crate. And now after so many repeated listens, what is now your sleepy time music? Yeah, exactly. This is essentially um the <laughs> Falling op- asleep to one winged angel on O C remix. <laughs> the opera is essentially uh, uh, my my lullaby, and I remember one day I was driving home, 
on 641, a highway, uh, I wouldn't say a major highway, but it's pretty much one of the only ways into Murray. And I remember not knowing what was going on and feeling this thud, 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 and opened my eyes, and there was a big road closed sign right in front of me. Like it was like planes, trains, and automobiles, like scary. Like I just kind of like opened my eyes, like, oh shit. And I, without thinking, I mean, it was just reflex. I just turned the wheel like to the maximum, like the steering column. Could have come out. I turned it so fucking hard and fast to the right. And my car jerks back onto the road. Because what I've done, of course, is driven off the road. Uh, For some reason, they had a road closed sign in the median. I don't know what that was about. They just really didn't want us on the median. Um, This is really going to freak out more on his way home. Yeah, exactly. We see this guy every day. This is about where he hits the opera song from Final Fantasy VI, and we want (laughs) to really want to scare his ass. Uh, which might be the case because they may that might be the only reason that road was clear. The highway was completely clear. Uh, but I didn't know that at the time because I didn't know what the hell was going on. I jerked the wheel hard, get back on the road, end up doing a 360 on the highway. The car stops facing the direction that I was originally going. Mm-hmm. And it was just like the smell of rubber and like the rubber smoke yeah. is like all around me. And I just kind of <laughs> sat there for a minute, still not exactly knowing what's going on. And then I realized, oh, I'm on the highway. I need to go. I need to like <laughs> not park the car what? here. <laughs> oh, so. <laughs> so I start, I start driving uh, back towards home. And it was no more than five minutes later. I'm falling asleep again. Oh wow! <laughs> that, that, that probably would have parked me up the rest of the way yeah. home. But like, <laughs> yeah, that adrenaline yeah. was. Uh, that I had a really good spike for like five minutes, where my heart was like beating up against my rib cage. And then you know, eh, we did it. We could probably do it again. It's fine. Man, rumble strips usually give me enough adrenaline to get home. <laughs> Normally, if I feel uh, if I'm really about to fall asleep. Then like I I have to start screaming. I will drive my car and just be screaming and pounding my feet. It's about the only thing that will work to get me to my destination. Yeah. I try to tickle the roof of my mouth with my tongue. Hmm. I have to try that. And it is infuriating, but it works for me most of the my, time. Mine is usually jacking up max AC and blowing it right in my face, and so I'm so freezing cold that I can't go to sleep. Oh, I, I, I do that. that. That's gonna put me asleep. I do yeah. that all the time anyway. I yeah. hate it because my it dries my eyes out, which makes it, like, every time I blink, it's just, like, a reward. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I will keep my car so cold that the air conditioner gives me an ice cream headache. Oh, wow. God. Yeah. I didn't know that was possible. <laughs> yeah. When it's right on your face, you get that referred pain right there, yeah. Really? Wow. Yeah. What's up, Wiley? One of of the only times I've ever been pulled over. I was dozing off on the way home from work way back when I worked at AOL. um, And the cop decided to give me a long lecture about the dangers of sleeping while driving because he knew I wasn't drunk. I was like 16. Yeah, it's it's not a good thing. It's not something I'm proud of. (laughs) But, you know, (laughs) at least I'm not drinking and driving much. Yeah. <laughs> much, <laughs> just doing it like mad, like madman style, just like from neighborhood to neighborhood. Yeah, you go over to my house drinking. Tonight. Exactly, like when I leave Tyler's house <laughs> <laughs> and go home tonight. If there's not an episode next week, well, you know what? <laughs> Dave up, Dave died. I either fell asleep or um, just drank a whole lot before I left here. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm your jailed host, Dave. <laughs> My one call. <laughs> we do that. We have to do it serial style. Like you have a collect call from yes, exactly. Dave at the Baduka Penitentiary. That's where it is now. We're just gonna say it's there. You have a collect call from motherfucking Tadpog. <laughs> nice. What's up, Wiley? Uh, well, hello, Tadpog Nation. I am your mustachioed host, Wiley. Um, and if Tyler has a long run of never watching star wars Mm -hmm. i probably have a very long run of watching them all the time i love you Uh, wiley have ever mentioned that what's that have ever mentioned that i love you wiley oh i love you too dave (laughs) um and you too tyler i mean i love you but i also want to steal all the knowledge out of your head (laughs) (laughs) yeah after i listened to that episode i sent you a text message that said move to florida and i will teach you everything i know (laughs) no i don't want to have to like like go through that whole process i just want to take it just take it from you like like i'm uploading from the matrix just take it from you oh i i'll 
trade you. Give me <laughs> give me some of those DM skills. <laughs> Fair, fair. <laughs> I don't know if that's fair. <laughs> Shh, don't oh, 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 no, that's totally a good deal. <laughs> Speaking of which, um, where is Leva in Florida? Orlando. Ah, uh, yeah, that's a little far for our group. We're like two hours north. Um, but yeah, so I was saying before the show started, I used to go over. I met this kid in Little League, and we found out on the baseball team that we lived down the same street i could ride my bike to his house just like a week ago so we used to <laughs> spend the night back and forth at one another's houses on the weekends um and his parents were a way more strict than my parents about what he ate um i have never had milk for dinner in my life like that's uh, it to like, drink like, oh okay <laughs> <Now> that, <laughs> like, one glass of yeah. milk down in front of everybody yeah exactly your liquid um, sustenance boy <laughs> now that you say it yes the, i was ambiguous <laughs> <laughs> um, no, we would have like pepperoni pizza and milk. Yeah, I had a friend that did that too. For, yeah, oh, oh hate yeah, it. Yeah, it was it was weird. Um, but he was a good friend of mine, uh, and we used to go over. And after dinner, mom and dad had really strict requirements about what he could eat. It couldn't be sugary. It couldn't have caffeine in it. Like maybe because they thought it would keep him up, mm-hmm. or they wanted him to eat healthy or what have you. And really the only snack they had in the house that we would be allowed to eat were dill pickles. <laughs> <laughs> and there would be this jumbo jar of large dill pickles just hanging out in his fridge. Um, and, you know, I'm, I'm fifth grade, uh-huh. fourth grade. I'm, I'm playing Little League. Um, so here we are look, with giant dill pickles in our hands. It looks like a baby's holding it. And chomping on that and we would watch star wars and so it would be like capri not capri sun um the crayon apple or crayon grape <laughs> oh, o- ocean spray oh. i think we had the same friend oh. Riley. we might have just <laughs> <laughs> and dill pickles and return of the jedi because he liked the ewoks so we would watch most of the time it would be return of the jedi i could every once in a while talk him into a new hope did you explain um, to him that the ewoks are the worst thing in that movie <laughs> I tried. Man. <laughs> I tried. But he's a fifth grader. Yeah, fair yeah. enough. I mean you don't want to you don't want to stop that pickle supply either. You, <laughs> oh yeah. You bad mouth the Ewoks, you might not get any more pickles. <laughs> but as giant as they were, you know, like at the beginning this seems like a really good idea because you're hungry and it's late <laughs> at night and it's a snack and whatever. So what if it's a dill pickle? But when you get halfway through it and it's still there and now it's warm. <laughs> 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 this started a lot better. I would just wash it down with a nice, Luke, warm, <laughs> room temperature glass of cranberry juice mm. or milk, whichever you prefer. Because my friend, ever for di- for dinner, we had to drink milk at his house, and he would always his mom would put it in the freezer <laughs> until she gave it to us, and they were just like it was iced over the top. And we had to crack the ice on top, Ugh. and it was just like chunky ice in it. Ugh. Just man, ice ice milk. That's every time for dinner. Going over to a friend's house, any friend's house, when I was around fifth grade, fourth grade, was just a nightmare for me because I was such a picky eater. Like it was just like, how am I going to offend my friend's mom tonight? Because I mean, it didn't matter who who it was. It was just like, I just got to, I just got to eat this. Like I just have to eat this and um, maybe push some around the plate, hide some a little bit. Yeah. Mm. Yep. But there we would awake early the next morning on a pallet. In his living room floor, half-eaten pickles in our hands. Pickle drunk. (laughs) (laughs) Right? Dreams of fuzzy teddy bears. You want to talk about Star Wars? Yeah, I mean, yeah. Well, this the N64 game. You want to talk about Shadows of the Empire. Oh, Not the book, the N64 game. Less, less, I want to talk about it less than I want to talk about Star Wars. But Mm. yeah, we can do that. That's what the show's about. So, I mean, when, when people saw the name of this episode... I mean, they were probably, probably expecting, expecting this. Yeah. I'm surprised at the number of my friends who have played this game. I I ran it by a couple of them. They're like, oh, yeah, I love that game. Really? And looking up the date when it was released, I was playing PC games by now. Yeah, so. I was too. I'm glad that you bring that up because we've talked about how much better Star Wars games were on the PC. Oh, yes. In the, in the past, like especially in the SNES era. Um, spoilers. <laughs> uh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I... Was here's here's the deal. I never played this game, 
like most N64 games, never played. So every N64 game that I play, I I have the fortune of playing without any nostalgia goggles at all. Uh, I feel like I'm getting better at just understanding the limitations of the system and appreciating um, what technology they had at the time and the fact that they're dealing with a cartridge-based system as opposed to some kind of optical media. That all being said, oh boy, oh, <laughs> oh boy, Shadows of the Empire. I also, Wiley, I also know people who love this game. They love this game. And I remember when this game came out, it was in magazines everywhere. All the gaming magazines were talking about this game and about how uh, amazing it was. So it's really, it was really hard for me to appreciate that hype, the, the 1998 <laughs> hype machine. Yeah. <laughs> when it's I was got playing 3D, this. Dave. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I guess. Um, what what was your experience like, Tyler and Wiley? Well, do you hear that? Um, no, I don't. Is it the is it the hover train? Dave reads from, Dave reads from Picklepedia. Uh, <laughs> oh, is Picklepedia a thing? A, I'm looking it up. I'm I looking it up not. right now. And we're, if it is, I'm not going there. We're the registering day. that. If it's available, we're <laughs> registering Picklepedia. But, but but it's just it's it's dicks. It's a lot of... It's a hot or not for dicks. (laughs) That's what I'm afraid of. (laughs) Pickle surprise, motherfuckers. Uh, Pickle. pickle? Picklepedia. um, Yes, picklepedia.com is... It's taken, unfortunately. Um, It's just a line of text that says, Too much spam. View source for info. (laughs) Mm, See, this could have been my million dollar idea. Yeah. I, I, so, no, I don't hear that train. What is it? It sounds like a cat hacking up a hairball or something. Uh, it's two kids eating pickles and getting sick of them halfway through. Oh, yeah. Hey, I know I know that conductor. That's uh, that's our very own beloved Wiley Ammons. Choo-choo. Driving in the uh, Dave Reads from Wikipedia train. Okay, guys. <clears throat> Star Wars, colon, Shadows of the Empire. They go, first of all. This, Say it in Japanese. Uh, well, they don't have a Japanese. Uh, they don't have a Japanese uh, translation here. Yeah. Um, but I can do my best. I can do my best. For well, Jap- Japanese Star Wars is Sailor Moon, so they have their own thing. <laughs> yeah. Tuxedo Mask is pretty much the best, best Darth Vader. Put it on our next T-shirt. Sailor Moon is Japanese Star Wars. <laughs> oh, yeah. Speaking of making nerds angry. <laughs> Lucas Arts Shadows of the Empire was one of the first games available for the N- Nintendo 64. I guess that has a lot to do with the hype. Uh, and later for Windows, the most commercial product in the Shadows of the Empire line, the game was first released in December 1996 as an exclusive N64 title four months after the console's launch. In the game... Players control mercenary Dash Rendar in his efforts to help Luke Skywalker and rescue Princess Leia from Prince Shizor's hands. It is divided into four parts or chapters. And then they list all the parts and chapters, which I'm not going to really go over. Um, The N64 and PC versions differ somewhat. The PC version has sharper and smoother gameplay graphics when using a 3D card. I mean, okay. Uh, both versions have slightly different cutscenes. The PC version has full motion cinematic cutscenes with sound effects and voices, while the N64 version utilizes artwork with text at the bottom of the screen. Um, there's a whole big section about, I mean, uh, actually, the game is just a subsection of the Wikipedia entry for Shadows of the Empire because it was a really cool thing that they did where they were, I guess. It, it makes it sound like they were testing the waters of whether they an, another movie would be worth it because they did this whole multimedia thing where it's like, we're going to write, we're going to have a book that takes place. It's going to be written by, by the way, it's going to be written by Steve Perry. It may or may not be the Steve Perry from Journey. Mm, okay. I don't know. <laughs> I, haven't, I haven't confirmed it. Um, it's going to take place in between two of the movies. It's going to take place between uh, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. 
and we're gonna we're gonna create a soundtrack for it like we would a movie. We're gonna release that. We're gonna sell that. We're gonna sell the book. We're gonna do a um, a comic book that ties in with the with the main story. We'll release a game. Uh, pretty much anything that um, we can do to promote this and to enrich this, we're gonna do. Um, I read the book. I don't know if either of you guys have read the book. Um, I read it in high school when it came out. It'd be pretty good if I've only seen like episode one, two, and three and read this book. <laughs> no, this yeah. you would have gone in blind, yeah, because one, two, and three hadn't been out, so it was just it would have been like a whim. You're like, yeah, okay, the Star Wars thing, sure. I'll, I'll give this a shake, <laughs> and then you would have been on sale. You would have been that guy who's like, you know what, Han Solo's okay, but he's no Dash Rendar. Yes. <laughs> Speaking of terrible character names, come on, Dash Rendar, yeah. And Dash is essentially, um, spoilers for those who haven't, if you haven't watched Empire Strikes Back, you might want to go ahead and skip ahead two minutes. At the end of Empire Strikes Back, Han Solo gets frozen and blah, 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 blah. You have to listen. I'm sorry. You have <laughs> I know, to listen. I know. I, I, I know that. I know that. He gets frozen in carbonite uh, and not to be released from his carbonite prison until um, probably about 30 minutes into Return of the Jedi. So... This book takes place in between those two movies, and this game takes place in between these two movies. So, I mean, you got to have Han Solo in there, right? But we can't. Mm -hmm. But we can't because he's frozen in carbonite. I know what we'll do. We will create Dash Rendar. Who the store brand version of Han Solo. <laughs> exactly. He's the, he's the blue light special <laughs> Han Solo. He doesn't have a Wookiee companion. He has a droid companion named Lebo. And uh, he doesn't drive the Millennium Falcon. I think his ship is the Outrunner. Uh, but it looks a lot. It looks kind of like the he Millennium drives Falcon. the Thousand Year Bird. <laughs> <laughs> so he is. That's all you need to know. He is the off-brand Han Solo, and he is also the star of Shadows of the Empire. Mm. Mm. I guess it's a better name than Sean Duo. Sean Duo. Yeah, if you're doing store brand to Han Solo, it's like. Honey Nut Cheerios oh, or Honey O's. <laughs> well, see, I've since I've never seen the movies, I I've never played the games. I feel like that's the draw. Like you love the movies, so you play the games. So I yeah. one, I don't have nostalgia glasses for any of these games. Mm -hmm. Two, I don't have Star Wars goggles. Mm -hmm. I don't have like a love for the movies that makes me appreciate the elements that I'm playing with. Yet. <laughs> Yet. I want to interject and just say that I think if you had Star Wars goggles for a lot of these games, they would be working against the games. Favorite. Yeah. Yeah. Agreed. Because I'm playing all these Star Wars games based solely on their gameplay mechanics. And so far, out of all the Star Wars games that I have played, I have thought every single one of them are fucking terrible. And I feel <laughs> like all of these games just like, okay, well, it's Star Wars, so we don't have to try it that hard. People will buy it no matter what because it's Star Wars. Mm -hmm. So who cares if it's a functional good game? It's Star Wars. They'll love it. They'll eat it up. So Yeah, Dave, you were talking about the 90s promotional machine. Yeah. I, I bet all of the box images and magazine images were all of those main Star Wars characters in the half-second cutscene that you get to see them. Did you did you look at any of that stuff? No, I didn't. I did. Are yeah. you are you talking about the PC version cutscenes? No, no, no. There. I mean, if you call them a cutscene, in between the story sections, oh, you get yeah. to see Han Solo right. shows up in this game. Yeah, at the but, beginning. Yeah, yeah, at the beginning at uh, Echo Base on Hoth. Han uh -huh. Han is like, "Hey, good buddy, Dash Rendar. I'm just gonna jet on out of here." Take care of things on Echo Base. That's right. The Empire's coming. Yeah. I'm out of here. Good luck, sucker. <laughs> Which I'm glad you brought that up because when I okay, I want to I want to express my experience with Shadows of the Empire. This is what happened. I put the game in. Turn the game on. Everything loads up. Okay, so far so good. The game. I have that weird conversation with Han Solo, which I don't remember from the book. Um, because it didn't fucking happen. There's right. no mention of Dash Rendar ever being on Hoth or in the Battle of Hoth. Um, and then the Battle of Hoth happens, and you're in a snowspeeder. Well, let me ask you something okay. about this. Out of all the movies, uh, all and everything that I like, from the movies and now from the games, like based on me playing the games, like Hoth is that's pretty much the planet where all of Star Wars happens, right? Well, you're kind of yeah, you're kind of going where I was going, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> because the Battle of Hoth is like that seems to be 
and eighty percent of Star Wars games. Yeah, 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 it's absolutely. Trope. So it's like, okay, I guess Ewoks are amazing and powerful. The Sand People <laughs> rule a third of the universe and the entire world. Hoth is the sun in which everything circulates around. Yeah, pretty much. Everything else is made of ice. (laughs) Which the Battle of Hoth is amazing. I love that. It's a great, it's it's great in the movie. And honestly, I think it's great in this game. I agree too. With the A-Wing, you get to pull the the rope around the feet of those ATST walkers. And that's like epic Star Wars moment that you get to play. Absolutely. And I was, I was really enjoying this game. I was like, holy shit, this game kind of plays like Rogue Squadron. This is great. This is going to be a lot. This is going to be an awesome experience. And then it reminded me of Rebel Assault. Did you play Rebel Assault on the PC? It was one of the very first CD-ROM games I ever saw. Yes, absolutely. That game is great. Yeah. Uh, So the very first scene reminded me a lot of that. And I thought, this is going to be awesome. Yeah, 100%. I was was completely on board. And then the Battle of Hoth ends. You finish that. And now all of a sudden the game is a third person over the shoulder shooter. Yeah. Um... It's completely different. How do you shoot Dash Rendar from the hip exclusively? There's no ridicule. No, <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I injured my shoulder. I had my soldier uh, shoulders. My soldiers. I call. I call my shoulders my little arm soldiers. <laughs> so I got my little arm sh- sh- soldiers. <laughs> <laughs> had them affixed in place so I can't raise my arms, which just makes me a better pilot, but I exclusively shoot from the hip. And you're saying you didn't read the book? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so yeah. the, the shooting part, like, that is really not a good part. Yeah, well, and that brings <laughs> and me to one of my control like criticisms. The, the thing this game was missing, and I know it was a limited of the Nintendo 64, was a second analog stick. Yeah. Yeah, because you are everything is pretty much on one plane, right? I yep. mean, you can hold down the Z button on the back and bend forward mm-hmm. and down, but which it, looks hilarious, by the way, <laughs> because Dash is frozen from the hips down, and then his body does this like nightmarish Geppetto like um, marionette move, where it's like you can bend him pretty much. At the waist, like ninety degrees back, <laughs> like the old GI Joe toys that, yes! like, that had the rubber band the rubber that was band. holding there. Yeah. Which after watching this, Meg was like, "That's not so hard. I can do that." <laughs> so we got to watch Meg try to like plant her hips and bend awkwardly around. She could not do she it. She, do she's it. no Dash Rendar. <laughs> she. Also, I don't also feel like she uh, wasn't putting her heart into it. <laughs> mm. Yeah, or just weird stuff. Splicers are doing in Bioshock was the other thing I thought about. <laughs> yeah, like that's crazy contortionists. And I don't know which game came out first. I'm I'm assuming Tomb Raider because this game, all, the the controls of all like the shooting and the your movement, your controls, yeah, are just like copy and paste from Tomb Raider. Like you move just like Lara Croft. Your platforming is very similar, only it's just done like not not nearly as well. One because like. You're playing Tomb Raider and like the D pads, there's not, it's not as, it's hard to keep going with the D pad. Yeah, the D pad's just camera angles. Yeah. And the joystick, like, it's very easy to jump too far, overcorrect, slide around. Like, uh, I don't, don't, you haven't played it yet, Dave, but, um, Zelda Okunara of, Okunara of Time, his the wing boots allow you to fly, but also you have zero traction and you're just slipping around constantly. Like the whole, whole everything is grease, and that's <laughs> how that's sort of how Dash Rendar. I mean, every everything's got grease on it, and he's just like sliding around, jumping. Yeah. He's having trouble, and then floating like he's got a permanent float spell cast on him. So you jump and you just like hang there, float real slow, and then slip and Ocarina. O- Ocarina, thank you. <laughs> yeah, we'll get Ocarina, it. We'll Ocarina. Get, we'll do flashcards. Yeah, maybe it is Ocarina. Um, Check out the big brain on Brad. They were released the same yeah, year. I was just looking at Tomb Raider. <laughs> I was looking that up too. I was looking at the month. Let's see. Tomb Raider came out in October. 25 October, Shadows of the Empire was 3rd December. So, you're right. right. Tomb Raider did it first. Um, wow. The controls are wonky. You're right. Because instead of like... Having like a an exploration based game, why don't we all right take Laura Croft and and put her in Star Wars and give her give her a gun 
and just make it to where she kills stuff. She just shoots stuff in front of her. She kills stuff. She jumps and she flips switches. And that's going to be what the game is. Mm-hmm. Can Laura Croft strafe? That is a good question. I don't know. I never she played can, the first one. I believe two. she can. I played the first one just because of the, the supposed nude, nude patch. patch. Ah, which nice. I tried, like, I had no idea what I was doing. I fucked my computer in that game all up <laughs> trying to do that. I went to every, like, site I could do. Like, nude patch. I didn't know anything about downloading anything I just want to see cartoons. I was like, nude boobs. patch, nude patch. It'd be much easier to like, just type in and go look at pornography as opposed to trying to no, I get it. take off her pixelated shirt for her awful triangle boobs. But no, that's what I did. Um Nude would be patch. Laura Croft, Tyler. I, Laura Croft. I got the nude patch. I remember getting the nude patch, installing the nude patch, taking time to figure it out, booted it up. I was like, oh, this is dumb. <laughs> <laughs> this this is like like the least arousing thing, and I uh, I I quit the game, <laughs> un- uninstalled the game entirely, and did a fresh install. I think this is like Tomb Raider two or three. You really could have just like taken the clothes off a of Barbie and had the same effect of the yeah. nude patch. <laughs> I, I can't speak for the to- for Tomb Raider one nude patch, but I can say that Tomb Raider two if it's two or three, I can't remember. I get those numbers mixed up all the time, as you know. Um, Resident Evil 2, Resident Evil 3. It's all the same to me. Um, one of those nude patches, that's just not worth it. Just not worth it. I, I'll take creek por- pornography over nude patch any day. <laughs> Down by the river. Exactly. Um, yeah, so, yeah, it had such a strong start. And, and then, uh, so about the strafing, I discovered that you could do that yeah, about yes. halfway through this game. Me and too. It, to- it totally changed it not to the good, but to the better. <laughs> yeah, okay, that's a fair, that's a good way of putting that, I think. How about uh, first-person mode? Did you discover that? I did. Well, see, um, I don't... Those C buttons, they all did something different. Yes. Um, and not until my buddy Jordan came over and paused it and showed me that you could see the controls in the pause in, screen. In the option, yeah. Um, I was just guessing, and one of those C buttons would change the camera angle. Right. And that would always be the one I pressed at that critical moment where I needed to duck. On or you're trying to switch level. weapons. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and I like creatively changed the camera angle and watched myself get hurt. <laughs> what is from, up with that cinematic camera angle? It's like, do you know the one I'm talking about? Like you've got the over yes. the shoulder and then you hit the camera button once and this little cinematic camera icon shows up at the bottom of the screen and it's just... It's just the camera looking at Dash Rendar. It's like there is no reason that this is the game. Because first of all, you cannot play the game this way. No. It, it is impossible because you won't be able to see where you're going or what you're shooting. And secondly, it's just showing you ugly ass Dash Rendar. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not like you can take a screenshot on a right. Nintendo 64. The programmers were like, we did a good job on this. Look at his face. Look, <laughs> look at him. It doesn't look like a catcher's mitt. <laughs> <laughs> is there, the story of this, is it parallel to the book? Do they do a good job like adapting the storyline? Kind of, sort of. Not really. I mean, it's. I think it's like a missed opportunity because um, I, like Shadows, I like the Shadows of the Empire book when I was in high school. And for this show, I found uh, Shadows of the Empire audiobook on YouTube. Wow. I'm sure it's 100% illegal, um, mm-hmm. but I found it and listened to it. It's kind of done, but like a radio drama almost. Uh, it's like three hours long. Um, it is, I mean, it's, it's entertaining. It is, the book is, I figured I was going to listen to it and be like, oh God, I cannot believe I enjoyed this um, when I was younger. But I listened to it and it's not... Uh, great fiction or anything, but it it's, it held up for me. Um, the game does not do the the book any credit, I don't think. Meg, do you want to jump on? Okay, just she listen. Just, she just wants to listen to Wiley. Okay, she misses Wiley. I miss you too, Meg. I, miss you. <laughs> I know. Um, I hate that I'm not going to see you in in May, but I understand. <laughs> <laughs> She's only speaking in one one two words at a time now. It's her new thing. I'm tired. That's, there you go. Now you're on. Oh, I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> we're just talking about Shadows of the Empire in here and how I feel like there are a lot of missed opportunities in the game mm. because they could have they could have really tied it into the book um, instead of retelling Dash's story in a really weird way. I mean, this is this is Expanded Universe, right? Yeah. Are there any well, other games it's, it's based canon. on the Expanded Universe? Oh, it is canon. It, well, it's canon C. 
I don't know exactly how Star Wars <laughs> canon works, but when I looked up Shadows of the Empire, I think on Wikipedia. Like A is good, B B is like okay, C is just shit. So it's canon C. No, C is average. Okay. okay. D D is not D is passable. It, it's, but can, not, it's canon American math skills. <laughs> yes. Right. And F is slash fake. Yes, exactly. <laughs> F is the super Star Wars uh <laughs> games. Oh yes. <laughs> Well, and interesting, I love the idea that you insert stories that are kind of in between or side stories to the main mm-hmm. story, but I think they were trying to involve too many of the main characters, and they were hamstrung by doing that because they can't change the story. Right. And so Dash Rendar can't do anything that has any effect on the main Star Wars story. Right. Because these characters all have to get right back in their places sure. for Empire. And Dash is not mentioned in right. Jedi. So it wouldn't make sense for him to do, you know, something amazing that changes the world. Because there, right. there's a PlayStation 2 game. I, th- I believe it's PlayStation 2. Uh, like Lord of the Rings, like the Third Age or something like that. And it's basically you're playing a group of heroes that are like 10 minutes behind <laughs> the regular heroes. So like you'll see them in like the bushes and stuff, and you have to like hide, and then you'll you're basically just picking up their leftovers the whole way through, and nice. like so like you end up like you end up talking to Gandalf a little bit more whenever yeah. he falls down the cliff, like for the Balrogs, like whenever you don't see Gandalf in in the shows, yeah. or Gandalf Gandalf whatever whatever I'm saying, that he's off go he's off actually talking to the other to main party B back here that is still the same setup as the other the other party. <laughs> So well, cool. Fly like, it, cool. It reminds cool. me of that. Yeah. No, a little bit. Yeah, I mean, you're not wrong. <laughs> yeah. But, but there's a train level. There's yes. a train level in this game. I yep. thought about you the whole time I was playing it, Tyler. Train, the train level <laughs> makes a return. So we tra- haven't had a train level in a while. It's, it's, on, it's on like the rusty water and diarrhea planet. Where <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's the train that's like it has to, it has to travel through all of this. It's not as bad as the train level in Buster Bus Loose. It's not, <laughs> but it's also not great because it's by nature a fucking train level. Oh man, there's a bit of sign. Okay, I'll duck. Yeah. All right, I'm gonna yep. jump over this sign. Uh huh. Why there's a, okay, I can't pass through this one. Oh, ow. <laughs> Oh. oh yeah, when the train like goes into the water, yeah, and it's yep. like I don't know what's ha- uh, I'm going okay. Dead. There's like this big orange beam. I can't, I can't, I can't jump over it. All right, my legs hurt, or I can't duck under. Oh, now my head hurts. All right, just the way, it, just the way it is. It's a train level. Just gonna take that in the face. <laughs> Accept it. I'm gonna jump to this other train. I'm gonna float in the air right up in the diarrhea water. Okay. <laughs> But see, this was the thing about the yellow buttons. I didn't do any of that because what I did is as soon as that bar was coming, I dramatically changed my camera angle. <laughs> <laughs> and got to watch Dash get hit in all sorts of different creative <laughs> cinematics. Get to watch his Clint Eastwood permanent frozen expression of <laughs> sourness. <laughs> Right? Here's my expression before I got hit in the face. Here was my body position before I got hit in the face. He looks like one of the Geico cavemen to me. <laughs> yeah. With, with how broad shouldered he, he is with all the armor that doesn't do anything to protect you from anything. I think it was Tyler who pointed out that his shoulder pads look like, they look like baby back ribs. Because <laughs> <laughs> he's dressed like old-fashioned cable. Mm-hmm. Like yeah. the 90s, the X Men yeah, cable. You're you're right. Pallet swap cable. Now, what what would make Han Solo better? I don't know. A cool name like Dash and make him look like Cable. How about Bishop? Fuck you. It's Cable. <laughs> <laughs> but then I didn't like. Oh, the, another gripe about the N64 controller. Like, why there's so many games that are like joystick exclusive when the joystick is just so poorly placed? Yeah. Right. Like, I feel like this game would have been better if you could have used the D-pad so you yes. don't overcorrect as much. Yes. But nope, got, may as well just yes. pick up a knife and just saw off that D-pad part of the N64 controller. Because yes. it just yeah. mimics the camera. I mean, it's just the the yellow buttons. It, it makes, it, it doesn't make any sense to me. Mm-hmm. And the joystick is is bad. The game controls poorly. When you're Dash Rendar, the game controls poorly. This is what, every time I was controlling Dash... It felt to me like I wasn't controlling a human character. I was controlling a vehicle. It's yeah. like it's like they built a game that was vehicle driven and then decided to make it a person instead of a speeder or instead of a swoop bike or instead of um, a Carillion freighter. Uh, they're like, I don't know. It's it'll work just the same if it's a person, right? 
<laughs> it's just, I mean, if we're more Resident Evil being like tanks and everything else. This game controls worse than Resident Evil. So is that why you kept falling off cliffs? It yes, it is why I was falling. Off. I mean that, and I'm just naturally bad at Shadows of the Empire. So you want to talk about how egregious it is that this is ranked better than Resident Evil Two? That was yes, I would love to talk about that. <laughs> Resident Evil Two is a great game, and I and like that's coming from a guy who didn't play Resident Evil Two and decided to play it for a podcast in 2015. Um, that's, people said, "Hey, play this." Dave, like, no, 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 I got a plan. I got a plan. Yeah, I'm, I'm waiting. It's going to be great. We're going to talk about our dicks while we I'm, do it. I'm saving it for podcast. <laughs> I've got my promise ring and this yeah. thing that I saw. I'm saving it for podcast. I had a dance you, with my daddy at a ball that said that in 2015, I will talk about Resident Evil 2 on the internet. Me too, Day. <laughs> Your dad was really proud of you. He took that card you signed and put it up at work. Yep. My son's going to wait and play Resident Evil 2 until he has a podcast. Yep. Everyone was really impressed. Um, I think it's really weird that Okay, we haven't played through the list yet, so there might be game like Shadows of the Empire might belong on the list, but if it does, it definitely belongs lower to be lower ranked than Resident Evil Two. What about Mortal Kombat Trilogy? Um, well, it's better than Mortal Kombat Trilogy. Okay, there we go. It's pretty. How'd you feel about the um, the hover bike, the swoop bike in uh, Tatooine? Uh. Maybe that's what I mean. Um, <laughs> Maybe, yeah. That's it's the one. It's like it's like if it was a motorcycle, but it's got Marty McFly's skateboard strapped to the bottom instead of a wheel. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Uh, that's a swoop bike. And those and those swoop bikers that wait so patiently for you to catch up with them and destroy them. Yep. Yeah, it's really weird. That level is really, 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 really weird because it is like they tried to put a racing game just in the middle of Shadows of the Empire. But it, at the last minute, they were like, oh my God, this really is not fun. It sucks a lot. What can we do to fix it? Except we're going to put a donut at the very, very end <laughs> that if you don't shoot the donut, you get to start all over. That is actually, that is in the book. That's uh, that is th- that's called threading the needle in Beggars Canyon. So that oh, was yeah. that was actually one of that was I thought that was frustrating because I totally had problems threading that needle, but I did think it was cool that they included. So it. for that part, you need to read the book to know what was going on to, to clear the stage. No, it's just at the very end. Um, okay, it starts out you're you're in um, most Isley, a city mm-hmm. in Tatooine. You're in a city at going. You tap the acceleration button and you are like, you're going 200 miles an hour. You're in a city, you're running into walls, and it's hilarious because your swoop bike is indestructible. Yeah. I mean, you <laughs> yeah, can but just. These other guys. Yeah, they're blowing up left and right. All you have to do is like do a little like shitty road rash bump and they blow up. Uh, okay. Meanwhile, you can literally like. At one point, like I was trying to turn around, I got trapped in a corner, and it was hilarious to see the swoop bike just kind of like turning over itself and like rolling over <laughs> and like trying to drive up the wall. It's no Skyrim horse, but <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so you you eventually get out of Mos Eisley. Uh, you go over dunes. There's um, an obligatory uh, Sarlacc pit. There's two Sarlacc pits. Where is also something that bothers me in Star Wars games. They're like. Hey, here's something from the movie you guys know. Gotta have, have a Sarlacc. There it is. Has nothing to do with anything. You guys swooning, swooning over this? Are <laughs> yeah. you? Okay, good. It's like the weirdest fan service. Uh, and then you get to Beggar's Canyon, um, which at the at the very end, in order to complete the level, you have to ramp up uh, and jump through a rock formation that kind of looks like a giant um, head of a needle. It and, sounds sexier when you call it threading a needle. This is why I'm not an author. Yeah. Because shoot the donut just sounds... Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. Shoot the donut was pretty, pretty provocative. It made me think <laughs> of like like Homer having to like jump a bike <laughs> through the lard lad donut. Like, <laughs> it was very very evocative to me, at least. I, I have seen Steve To a better Perry's. genre. Evocative to lovers of donuts. Mm-hmm. That's right. I need to write cookbooks. Mm-hmm. I have seen Steve Perry's first draft, and uh, in it he did call it shooting the donut. So, All right. Yeah, I don't think you're a bad writer, Wiley. Fledgling author. You're you're no worse than Steve Perry. <laughs> <laughs> um, the swoop bike is weird because, well, I mean, it's weird because everything we said, but it's also normal because this game, like, 
kind of like does this vehicle thing. It does like a vehicle stage, then a then a shoot shit stage, as Nicole would say, mm. and then a, another vehicle stage. And it kind of like staggers these vehicle missions throughout the game. Because there's one point where you are um, in the Outrunner and you are controlling the guns, uh, shooting TIE fighters out of the sky. And, and that it, is fun. Yeah, absolutely. Man, I think all of the vehicle levels in this game, even the swoop bike, uh, level is better than the third person over the shoulder shooting. Yeah, well, and especially first person in that turret, that feels like another one of those classic Star yep. Wars movie moments. You're Han Solo in the turret blasting TIE fighters. Mm-hmm. But yeah, outside of the ship, it's walking a dude around with tank controls. And it is, it is really, in my opinion, the definition of floaty controls. Because when Dash jumps... Dash jumps high and far. It's like it's he jumps kind of like the tick jumps. Mm. <laughs> it's it's really difficult to like figure out where you're gonna land. Um, whether you jumped so high that when you land you will deal damage to yourself, uh, which has happened to me before. Um, and also there is um, sometimes he does this thing where he doesn't. If you walk up to a ledge. He won't fall off it, but he'll kind of do a stutter thing, which I guess is either bad programming or is just to let you know. Tim going, oh shit, oh shit, right, oh shit, exactly. Oh shit. Hey, dude, you're about to fall, but he doesn't <laughs> do like some kind of like whoa off balance animation. It's just the model just like stutters up and yeah, down. Yeah, same thing on the train level. Every time you started moving on the train level, it was like he was walking through mud. Yeah, yeah, not good. Not not a great situation. What was that move again? Whoa. 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 For all our <laughs> listeners at home, I'm waving my arms around like I'm falling. That's pretty out. funny. <laughs> That's the best that I can bring to this show <laughs> is, is my visual comedy. Well, the great <laughs> thing that really infuriates me about games of this era is they had to include an obligatory jumping puzzle. Yeah. Um, with the spinning gear room that looks like it's covered in red safety lights. Uh-huh. Um, there's an obligatory jumping puzzle where you have to make sure you time his poorly controlled jumps. Mm -hmm. Um, and there's also several walk through a tunnel and keep yourself from getting chopped up based on your walk timing Uh puzzles. Once again with bad controls. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And um, I guess, and I understand that is third person or first person perspective gaming, requirements maybe it's it's on in almost every game of this era but at the same time super frustrating i think that i would have been impressed with this game uh, as um as a young gamer in 1996 if i had no pc gaming experience i'm trying if I'm, i didn't know any better yeah. i'd be impressed by this game <laughs> oh yeah i'd have pickle in one hand n64 controller in the other <laughs> I mean, I'm trying to give the game some credit because I do feel like there that it deserves some credit. So yeah, it's like a you would have been what 14. Um, I would have been yeah 14 as a Easy, freshman man. in high school. Sorry, not you, Wiley. No, I'd, <laughs> I'd have been a junior when this came out. <laughs> so, as a freshman in high school, you've yeah. been impressed with it. Yeah, if I I I if I had not played any Star Wars games or any 3D games on the PC, I think I would have been impressed with it because this is, this was like really, I mean, this came out really shortly after the N64 was released. So I I think just the fact that it was still figuring it out. Yeah. I, I, I mean, I feel like at the time I probably could have been impressed by it. It's just weird. Like looking back on a game this old, that is like this, not sure of what it's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, even now, the spinning text on the title screen, I, I was surprised at how good that looked. Yeah. How sharp it looked. Yeah. And um, the um, the cutscenes. I know they're not like the fully animated cutscenes and fully voiced cutscenes are in the PC version, but there's little bits of animation in it that I think are yeah. really nice touches. They kind of remind me of like a Capcom style of animation. And I thought that well, was really cool. And that's where my nostalgia came in because I was looking at Han Solo. Mm hmm. And I was looking at Leia and and Luke. Although, what happened to Luke's face? What was? Oh, you mean Mark Hamill? He just got old. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, there was one scene. It was on Tatooine when Dash is talking to Luke, and Luke is all mauled up on the face. Oh, it's um the bike. The bikers beat him up. Oh, okay. Yeah, the bikers beat him up. 
I was like, that, that, I don't remember that. Yeah, they were in the book. They rough him up before he jumps on a, a speeder and takes off, or he jumps. Up, gotcha. He jumps on one of the swoop bikes and takes off. But that was where so my as, as a, as a Jedi, because, he just lets them beat on him. There's a bunch of them. Yeah, I mean, it, it Luke's one of those like characters where it's. I always feel like I mean, he's got a magic sword. Yeah, him, exactly. I mean, sword. these. This is essentially just. Not to put any biker gangs down, but this is essentially just a biker gang versus a fucking Jedi. <laughs> Sons of Anarchy, roll up on a yeah. Jedi. Man. I, mean, I feel like all you have to do is just like hit that lightsaber, just put the blade out, and they're probably going to back off. You right. don't have to actually start chopping them up. Just go ahead and like, Psh, look what I can do, look what I got. Two months previously, he was fighting the second in command of the Galactic Empire, and yeah. now he is getting the shit kicked out of him by 12 bikers. <laughs> <laughs> well, so my buddy Campbell, who was watching us play the game too earlier today, was saying one of the gr- great things about this is the reassuring notion that even in a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away, there's still douchebag biker gangs <laughs> roaming around. Being jerks. Have you? Have you? I was reading a. Uh, not reading. I was listening to um, a story about how journalists trying to sensationalize stories are why we have biker gangs yes, today. Yes, I heard this. Like biker gangs used to be like, it's like people, motorcycle enthusiasts who would like hang out. They were like just like they were all like Pat Boone. They would just like hang out and just liked being around each other. And then there was a journalist who like was put on this. He thought it was boring, so he sensationalized like they were criminals Mm -hmm. and then people started admiring that lifestyle and then it became a thing just because somebody wanted to sell a story it inspired easy rider which sparked um the huge like um biker gang phenomena i think i heard that on cracked on Mm -hmm. cracked podcast it was on cracked or it was on reddit the reddit podcast i I know i heard it i don't listen to the reddit podcast i think that's where i heard it too but the reddit i mean i love all things reddit but the Mm -hmm. man that I haven't listened to that podcast in a while. I, I didn't even try it after you told me about it. Yeah. Because you were like, cause you said it, it was kind of, it was pretty pretentious. Yeah. It's just yeah. like, hey, I made Reddit. <laughs> uh, let me just jerk off about all of these awesome <laughs> things that happened because I made Reddit. Yeah. I so skipped it. The stories are interesting. It's just like, the guy who does it, it's just like, fuck, man. Just He made go, Reddit, Tyler. Go jerk off the and then just like give the, bo- give the mic to the people who actually like contribute and shit like that. Those, uh, uh. Yeah. But well, anyway. Add that to my list of things to do when I finish the time machine. But like the is the <laughs> is like the force push like where I've seen in Star other Star Wars games where like they stomp and throw their arms out and just like everyone around them scatters. Yeah. Was this like not a thing yet? Is there just like uh there was force force, force choking and that's like there as was, much as they There was push and pull. Vader throws a whole bunch of um City in the Clouds furniture at Luke. Yeah. Yep. With the force. But um Is Luke not a very adept force user like that? No, he not not, not, not at this, that time. Not at this point. Yeah. He is um just learning. Okay. He's not like well, and, but not not back to gang level yet. Not okay. no, not quite. He can well, hold his own against didn't get really awesome until episode one when they could throw tons and tons and tons of droids around. Yeah, and that's the other thing where it's just kind of like one of those things where um I kind of feel like Star Wars got, or Jedi's kind of got Superman complex or Dragon Ball Z complex where it's like, oh man, let's, okay, these three movies came out and oh my God, they were amazing and they shaped the way we think about fiction, the way we think about mythology. Um, Let's just think about how cool it would be to manipulate that in extreme measures. And then like new stuff started coming out or it's just like, more bombastic because I, yeah, because I thought like moving a can towards you with the force was like a big deal. And then now I've seen all this stuff, like, because I looked on the Wikipedia, like looking up like other expanded universe stuff, and there's like there's a Sith Lord who fights with like 20 lightsabers that he just tr- controls telekinetically around himself and shit like that. So I don't know, midichlorians, I don't know if you did, <laughs> you just like, yeah. Like a Bioshock, like you just inject yourself with a ton of midichlorians and you can just like lift cars and throw them. And I don't, mm-hmm. I don't, I don't understand. Star Wars cars. I don't, Star Wars cars. <laughs> Swoop cars. Swoop, I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> Swoop mobiles. <laughs> um, pod racers. I, mm. Yeah, there you go. You've seen that movie. You know about pod racing. Darth Maul with spider legs. Just throw them in there. <laughs> I feel like we're going to catch a lot of hate for this episode. 
Yeah, well, because mm-hmm. like you said, I think this this was special to a surprising number of people. Mm-hmm. Friends that I was talking about had beaten it two and three times as kids. It's that's man. The nostalgia glasses are basically that's a. I feel like we're gonna hit that a lot with this N sixty four list because we haven't played them. Yeah, so like. <laughs> Our opinions probably aren't going to be very good to like people who would listen to a podcast yeah. about N64 games because they yeah. loved it so much. Yeah. And they're just like, these guys fucking suck. Yeah, we need Meg <laughs> to do a new disclaimer where she's like, if you really enjoy N64 <laughs> games, maybe you should listen to, I don't know, the Cracked Podcast or the Reddit <laughs> Podcast. It depends on your flavor of pretension. <laughs> I mean, we liked, so far, we liked Resident Evil 2. So, so far, we're. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, so the Leia we, we've had more Prince we've had more Zizor. hits than a than a stormtrooper. Hi oh yeah, that's yeah. a thing. <laughs> what were you saying, Wiley? The Leia and Prince Zizor, Zizor, Xor, however you say that. Shizor. Uh, Shizor? Yeah. Papa Gijo. Yeah. Papa Thank you. <laughs> Was that plot in the book? Because apparently all Leia does is steal plans and get captured. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's pretty much. And she, um, I thought that's what she did, was just get captured by various people. Uh, Leia, I feel like Leia is one of those like she's like one of the first strong female characters in a, I, I would in a fantasy movie. Mm-hmm. Um, Star Wars is one of those where like is it sci fi or is it fantasy? I think at its heart, it's it's a, a fantasy. Um, but like it's there's a weird part in um, the book in Shadows of the Empire uh, where. Uh, Gizor has this ability to um, exude pheromones and Leia just like totally falls in love with him and he starts commanding her around and that's essentially how how she's captured. <laughs> that is a very cringeworthy uh, part of the story because it's just kind of like, I don't know about I don't know all of this. I, I'm gonna, if he'll get to this episode and be mad at me eventually, but I remember <laughs> uh, Cockmaster Shake a fist puncher fame. He didn't buy pheromones, did he? What? No, he he <laughs> bought. It was a a clone called Realm. Okay. That supposedly had like pheromones in it, or had some pheromone effect. <laughs> I remember, like, he would code himself on this before he go to like dances and stuff. He's like, man, I think it, I think it worked. I think this realm worked. I mean, she danced with me a lot tonight. <laughs> mm, okay. This All realm right. isn't working, man. Pass me the Strago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So, but yet again, a Star Wars trope. We had Leia captured. You go into the garbage chute to go rescuing Leia, um, where you encounter the flying spaghetti monster. Yeah. <laughs> yep. He's there. Ice stock and all. He is yeah. very, very big. Uh, what are those called? Um, Dio. Dianocas. Dianocas, yeah. Um, there's one of those in the book, uh, which I, when I was fighting this, um, Cthulhu-esque giant monster in the sewers. I was thinking, oh yeah, there was one of these in the book when they were coming through the sewers. Uh, it was in two sentences, and Luke pulled out his lightsaber and just killed it. Mm. <laughs> like, I mean, and in this game, it is like it's a long, drawn-out battle. You get touched by his noodly appendage. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. Yeah, pretty. You use the jetpack in that level. We haven't talked about that yet. Yeah. Um, one of the more interesting control aspects of the game with the with that fight mm-hmm. where the jetpack works underwater mm-hmm. and it's kind of above water and below water jetpack and then the Boba Fett fight too, yeah. um, w- which was extraordinarily difficult yeah. to me. Yeah, because you're both jetpacking around. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like there's no indication of where he is. Um and it's it's a matter of like landing, trying to reorient yourself, and then being like, okay, where's Boba Fett? Oh, of course he's right on top of me. Like literally, he is above me, shooting me. Yeah, and your blaster will auto aim, except when it doesn't. <laughs> yeah, it's a good way of putting it. So you know, probe up there, auto aim, kill him in two shots. You don't even have to use the Z button. But Boba Fett, you only shoot at your shoes. <laughs> so is Boba Fett like? A, a badass warrior? Is he supposed to be like super deadly? I don't, because I just hear about him like everyone thinks he's awesome, but everything I see, he's just like losing all the time. He's like, the greatest bounty hunter in the galaxy. He's yeah. a clone of his dad, and his dad, like Mace Windu, is like, you're dead. So I don't, I don't, I've, I've got a lot of disconnect with Boba Fett because I don't understand him as a, yeah. as a character. 
and he only has like two lines in like the the original trilogy. That's the shit. whole thing. That's the yep. whole thing, right? Because like you hear that he is like the the baddest. He is he is just the the creme de la creme of bounty hunters. That's how they that's how they refer to themselves. Mm-hmm. Um, they're very fancy. <laughs> <laughs> and but meanwhile he has like he doesn't speak he barely speaks in the movies when he does it's raspy um it's it's essentially they've built this mysterious character he is mm-hmm. the mysterious character and that mystique um elevates him to like cuz i remember when i saw empire it was like oh who is this guy who mm-hmm. is this guy that he's he's got han solo because you know you've you you establish a relationship with Han Solo, you realize that he's got he always has a trick up his sleeve, and now there's a guy out there who got him. Uh, no one can get him, but this guy got him, and he doesn't say anything, and he looks badass. He's wearing this um, the Mandalorian the armor, Mandalorian armor, is which it, you don't, is you don't like. Know. Is it like an artifact? Like none of that's said in the movies, and like that's the way it should have been. Like they should have just like Boba Fett. Every iteration of Boba Fett outside of the movies makes Boba Fett less interesting. Yes. So that you don't need to understand him as a character more simply as a costume. Yeah. Yeah, I mean exactly. I mean the the fact the fact that you know nothing about this man other than the fact that uh the way he dresses, the way he sounds and the fact that he can get Han Solo. Yeah, uh, that makes him menacing. Yeah. And, and like cuz I was I was looking into it like Yoda's Yoda's backstory is something that's never been like you don't know his origin story. He's just powerful, powerful little guy. I don't know much Last about of his kind. Yeah, I don't know much about Yoda or his race because he's not. He's not. He doesn't look like Boba Fett. So why would I look him up? <laughs> it's true. It's true. <laughs> there you go. Do you guys have anything else to say about the game? Where you do achievements or I don't have any um, achievements. Maze level. Do you want to talk about the maze level? Um, in the boss fight, Is that yeah. maze level. I mean, it, we, it was the gladiator. Yeah, that's that's where, that's as far as I got, which is the second to last level. Um, yeah, I quit accidentally. I paused the game and accidentally quit while I was fighting him. Oh, um, that shouldn't be so easy to do. I mean, it. I there I mean, should be a quit. Are you sure? Yes, no, kind of thing. It or? is one hundred percent my fault, but. Yeah, I mean, it was one of those things where it was just like I hit start. Nikki came in with Henry. I was kind of I was talking to her, playing with him, and I looked back at the screen, and it was just one of those things where I guess I had inadvertently gone to quit and hit start to unpause the game, but start confirmed that I wanted oh, to quit. Okay. So yeah, I mean, uh, it, it was one hundred percent my fault. Um, well, so I had Jordan helping me out with the bosses in this. Um, I, had, I they were really frustrating to me, and I struggled with them and. Um, and they were all sort of this is not even my final form kind of bosses. Mm-hmm. You finally beat the jetpacking around Boba Fett, and then he hops in his ship and tries to destroy you. So just when you think you win, you have not won. Um, same deal with the gladiator. You destroy this gigantic robot. He turns into a head and torso, and you start all over again, except that the floor comes up and it becomes a maze. And so now you have to use your jetpack to get away from him. And then you finally destroy this head and torso robot. And you're like, wow, finally, I beat it. And then no, jetpack failure. Your jetpack no longer recharges. So you have a very limited amount that you can jump jump around. And the robot, this massive robot, becomes a remote. It's just his head. That's like a flat square floating around. Is he impossible to hit? Yes. Yeah, I figured because you encounter some of those th- like those little floating remotes earlier in that level, and they're impossible to hit. Yeah, even with auto aim. But then now you're on a boss fight, and you don't get auto aim. Uh-huh. Um, so, so they, they yeah, take away was... options from you to make a boss fight more challenging. Yeah, you do not auto aim in boss fights. Right, and your that seekers like don't work in harder. boss fights. The, the manual warned you about warned me about that. I did get that far in the manual where seekers are like heat seeking missile kind of things where you can shoot them at regular enemies and they'll seek the enemies. But if you're in a boss fight, all of the bosses have special EM emissions that prevent your seekers from working. Magic bullshit. Yes, <laughs> exactly. Well, I can dig that. All right. Magic bullshit. <laughs> yeah. So that was frustrating. And, and then... Dave, maybe you can help. If you get to the credits, there is um, a Weena Mechatur listed as the Hopping Woman. No, I don't know what that. I don't know what all that's about. They, yeah, she's Jordan credited. tells me in every video game, Star Wars video game he's played, they always mention the Hopping Woman. Really? Yeah. 
I did huh. not know about this. I didn't either. I guess I, that's it. I'm going to have to play through the Super Star Wars series on the Super Nintendo, I guess. Yeah, oh, this was his claim. I don't know if this is true, but this was his claim that the hopping woman is a thing. Huh. I'm going to start looking for it now. Just like I looked for uh, Yuki's mama <laughs> and Yuki's papa in Capcom games. Hmm. Um, we mentioned the jetpack. Mm-hmm. I just wanted to say that I felt like the jetpack reinforced uh, how I felt about this game felt like you were driving a vehicle and not a human. Yeah. Because I I felt like the jetpack worked wonderfully. The jetpack felt good. Mm-hmm. Um, I really enjoyed the two levels where they give you the jetpack because those controls are so much smoother and they feel intuitive, so much more intuitive than simply jumping with Dash it, Rendar. Yes, I agree. That's it. That's the la- that's the last thing that I wanted to say. Achievements? Talk about achievement. You don't have no, any, Wiley. Have do you have any? any? Um, I was trying to think of some, but not off the top of my head. No, I've got I've got two. Okay, what you got? My first one is Wampa Wamper. <laughs> which nice. you kill you kill ten Wampas. Uh huh. Which they 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 love to hide behind like doors that have like coke machines in them. Yes. And then just like slowly like ramble at you. Uh huh. And the other, which I guess this is sort of a thing that is good for the game. Like if you. If you get used to the the movement of Dashwindar and the jumping and the floating, it encourages exploration because you can explore everywhere and find like collector tokens, challenge points, and shit like that. Mm-hmm. And if you get all of them, you get like a new ending and stuff like that. So my second one is Weird Swan Collector, and you get that by getting all the challenge tokens. Okay. Okay. Nice. Yeah, I like. That. Oh yeah, yeah. You, you, about the rebel symbol, I got gotcha. you. The weird, the weird swan. Yeah. 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 Oh, <laughs> That's the symbol that, of the rebellion. Ah, I got gotcha. you. Now, I didn't come up with any because I was desperately trying to beat this game before we started. Alas, I failed. But um, I try to come up with some on the spot, but it's, we got to get this out. <laughs> we got to get this episode out, and I'm tired, so I'm not going <laughs> to. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, but uh, the, so the collecting of the symbols, we didn't talk about that at all. Um, that was, I think, one of those early kind of um, achievement sort of mechanics where it had a time that was par to beat for the level and a number of those, oh, what were they called? Challenge, like bonus Challenge points. Challenge points, mm-hmm. that's it. Where you had a number of challenge points that they would tell you per level and a, a time that you could beat for par. And if you... I think the time that you can beat for par is in the credits. It's one screen that's got the name of every level and a time beside it. And it says, can you beat these times? And they also give you that information, I think, at the end of each level, right? Yeah. Which yeah, is, yeah. it's it's it kind of sucks that they give it to you after you finish the level. Because it's like, oh, well, I, there's there were 15 challenge points in this level. I only got three. If I'd have known there was 15, maybe I would have, you know hunted some more down or yeah. something like that. They give and you one, go ahead. They give you extra lives, which is nice. So they have a purpose beyond just collecting them. Yeah. Um, because at the end of each level they tally up how many challenge points you've got and if it's of a certain amount you get bonus lives. Yeah, and maybe it was a limitation of being on a cartridge. I did have to explain to my buddies what clipping was. Oh yeah. Um, because that was terrible in yeah. this game. Yeah, it was. But I think that's totally to be expected. Uh, for the time. Explain to me what clipping is exactly. Uh, clipping is where you have two two modeled objects. Oh, okay. And when, instead of instead of colliding naturally, um, one will kind of enter the geometry mm-hmm. of the other one and mm-hmm. cause some really, usually hilarious effects. Mm-hmm. Yeah, if there's a speed run, there's a 55 minute speed run of Shadows of the Empire on YouTube. I watched that, and yeah. he takes ridiculous advantage of the clipping <laughs> errors in this game. Yes. Um, he jetpacks to a point where he go enters a wall sideways and it's like the game gravity changes and he can walk around and and jetpack zoom in inside walls and all this in this level. It's it's entertaining. I'm not sure I'd call it a speed run. Yeah, I mean technically it is. <laughs> Boo. I, I think that like that, that guy who beats Mario 64 yeah. in like 10 minutes by holding the rabbit and like phasing through walls. <laughs> yeah, that's the that's yeah, that's the kind of silliness that's going on. Um, but even not doing that intentionally, the game had some clipping problems. 
I'm glad that you reminded me that this game was on a cartridge because I think for a cartridge based game, uh, it sounded pretty good. Yeah, I, it did. I mean, John Williams' soundtrack sounded great. Actually, I think that was one of the typical of a early Star Wars console game. I think that was like one of the best things about the game was that when the when the soundtrack was thrumming, uh, I was excited to play the game, mm-hmm. um, which was usually in a vehicle level. Um, yes. Uh, the sound effects, I did think it was great that uh, Willem's, Willem's scream is in it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm glad you reminded me of that. We were laughing the whole time. Like, it wouldn't be Star Wars without Wilhelm scream. Yeah. And it's hilarious because it's like you're just going along and, like, all the sounds are pretty kind of, like, the sound effects are, are kind of muted. And then, like, if you just happen to shoot a guy and he falls off a ledge, <laughs> there's Wilhelm scream. Like, uh, four decibels higher than <laughs> yeah. everything else. Just so you don't miss it. Tyler. Yes, Dave. I've had fun. I've had fun uh, recording this show. I'm glad that I uh, played through Shadows of the Empire so that I could have this one hour and 15 minutes of fun with you and Wiley. <laughs> um, before we th- before we end things, I've got a couple of questions. Well, maybe a few questions for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, the first of which being... If you were to give this game a beard that sums up just how you feel about it, what kind of beard would it be? I'd have to give this a a dangling red flesh beard of the Sith Lord Scourge. Um, Please educate me on Star Wars uh, trivia. I do not know who Scourge is. Uh, I think he worked under Darth Revan. Okay, and like from KOTOR? Sure. Okay, from Knights of the Old Republic. Oh, such a good game. Okay, I must. I don't. I haven't gotten to him yet. Okay, cool. All right, that's good. I love. I love a Star Wars beard. Um, the only Star Wars beard that I can think of uh, would be Obi Wan's or Kyle Katarn's, or maybe that's it. Not Scourge. I don't know who that guy is. I'm. I'm excited to find out. If you were to give this game a pair of glasses, Tyler, what kind of glasses would they be? I would have to give this. Whenever, whenever he is tapping into the dark side of dark side of the force, the the yellow angry eyes of Jason Solo or or Darth Cadus, as he's otherwise known, is that one of the that one of Han and uh, Han Leia's and kids? Leia's kids? Yes, becomes yeah. a Sith Lord, Darth Cadus. Okay, wow. I also didn't know that. My mm-hmm. my knowledge of expanded universe is very limited. I got lost in the Wikipedia just looking up random yeah. shit today. That happens <laughs> sometimes, man. Check out Bothan. Check out Joe Camel Werewolf. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so really, overall, bo- both of these sound like they're they're cool cool beards and glasses. They do. But as to what I've heard so many like Star Wars aficionados say is that the expanded universe is shit. Don't listen to it. Just ignore it. So you can take that as either pretty good or, well, they don't even matter anyway. Like like a lot of stuff about this game. <laughs> I, think, I think that's very fair. Especially the plot. Yeah. That's one thing about the novel that I was thinking where it's, it is, that novel is, I mean, it is just plot point to plot point to plot point. Like, it. I mean, it's, I mean, to be expected, there's not going to be a lot of character work, but I mean, what are you going to do? Just stamp some Star Wars on it. People will buy it. Yeah, it's gonna exactly. Be good. <laughs> I mean, it's worked for uh, two generations of consoles. Why not? Why not again? Right. I've got a question uh, for both of you. Actually, um, it's a little segment that I like to call "How much is this game on Amazon?" Uh, if you were to buy this game used, Shadows of the Empire used for the N sixty four on Amazon, how much do you think you're going to be paying for it? How many of them did you say they were that were sold? This was a near launch title for the 64, right? Uh, it was. It came out four months after the console released. Um, they sold a bunch. I can't remember exactly how many it was, but they sold a bunch. Five dollars. Five dollars from Tyler. What do you think? What do you think, Wiley? Uh, I was going around the same range. Okay. Um, I'll say six bucks. Six bucks from Wiley. Actual. Retail value of Shadows of the Empire for the N64 used on Amazon at the time of this recording was five dollars and fifty nine cents. Oh, <laughs> just nice. about split Tyler. the difference. <laughs> Tyler takes it. Um, yeah, this is. I've been 
buying these games to play and shadows of the empire has so far been the absolute cheapest of all of them i got it for less than that Wow. <laughs> online which is saying a lot yeah like because they're usually more expensive games are usually more expensive online than finding them in a box at a yard sale yeah. or something oh yeah heck yeah Unless you go to one of those retro gaming stores, and then you'll pay yeah. three times yeah. that. Like Sixty dollars. Yeah. Holy yeah. shit! Bart versus the Space Mutants. One hundred twenty bucks. <laughs> That's a steal. <laughs> yeah, but you can get Jack Nicholas golf all day long for a dollar. <laughs> well, Wiley, you came on. Did you have a a announcement? A challenge? Yes. Well, so you guys played my call for the last one. I wanted to celebrate that two hundredth episode. Um, I love the Patreon idea, uh, and I love that people are contributing to that, and I I love you guys, so I want to encourage more of that, and so I'm I can fill that out a little more. So for the 200th episode, I was offering to do a matching gift where if someone else can put together up to a dollar an episode for the last for the first 200 episodes, that I would match it. Um, to try to encourage people to support you guys doing what you love because we love watching you, I guess, listening to you. You're welcome, Jacob, doing what <laughs> you love to do. Um, and so that's the deal. If uh, if they want to call in and commit to it or if they want to text and commit to it, um, anybody who will be willing to give to the you show me yours, I'll show you mine challenge, <laughs> I'll, I'll match them. Awesome. That's amazing. That's um, extremely generous of you. We do really appreciate it. Oh, well, I have gotten the pleasure that a lot of Tadpog Nation doesn't get to to do, which is sit and watch you two do this. Um, And I I know, and I have so much fun when I get the opportunity to do it with you. So uh, if we can do something to help you uh, be able to do it longer or do it better or whatever, or just to say thank you. I think it, it's been well worth it. But it's, but it's awesome. Thank you. Yes, thank you. very much. Thank you. My pleasure. And thanks for being on. Yeah. 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 Thanks for the invitation. Like I'll, I'll look go. for another one then when the next Star Wars game comes up. Yeah. That's what I mean. It's one of those things where it's like it's Star Wars. We got to get Wiley on. The, yeah, yeah. Rogue Squadron is coming up not too yep, far away. Rogue Squad- and I am super excited about Rogue Squadron. I didn't play it on the N64. Um, I played it on, I think, the GameCube. It might mm-hmm. not have been the first Rogue Squadron. It might have been just another iteration in the series. Mm-hmm. But that is. It was straight up fun. So the, the Star Wars, I'm looking well, forward. I'll be the judge of that, David. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's going to be fun for me because it's a whole bunch of it's a whole bunch of flying around shooting stuff. <laughs> well, and it was breaking my heart listening to the last episode. You and Leva and Jacob doing Civ Five and D and D cast. Yeah, <laughs> uh, I was so jealous, man. How was I not on that? Show? What do you What do you like those things or something, Wiley? I don't understand. <laughs> oh yes, yeah. so I think I talked about it on the interview episode. <laughs> Sid Meier, I think, is just a game design genius. Yeah, um, and he's he's done lots of different stuff, but his main trick, his big trick, is the civilization. And all those sorts of games, that big, long-form, large-scale strategy game that is just made. That's what computers were made for. When we get him on the show, you're gonna be <laughs> you're gonna be the fourth person on that episode. It'll be me, Tyler, Sid Meier, and you, Wiley. Uh, I'm not sure I could talk. It would just be sort of <laughs> basking in the glow. Well, what we'll do, I promise we'll get you in on our Jesus beer and miniature painting cast. <laughs> ah. we'll, we'll do that episode. Uh, so I just put in like a forty-five dollar order worth of miniatures from Reaper yesterday. Did you? I did. Awesome. Did you do one of their um, Kickstarters, or was it just a, an order off their site? Just an order off their site for I'm running the Rise of Tiamat um, module for D and D five with mm-hmm. a group right now, and it, them are new players. In fact, almost all of them are new players. And so I'm in, introducing a totally new group of people to D and D, and I had to make sure it was safe. Before I started the miniatures conversation, <laughs> test the waters. Oh, but man, they they have bought in. Um, nice. In fact, most of the miniatures that are coming in, the players are buying. I just picked up a couple extra for some of the big bad uh, characters that they will have their own miniature when we get there in the story. But we're already planning our painting party. Nice. The, 
the miniatures should be coming in the mail this coming week, so they'll be ready for our next session. They're excited about it, and they picked out their own. Sweet. It's going to add a lot to the game. I love Reaper's miniatures. I really want to see, uh, do you mind posting them when, once they're painted? Oh, yeah, sure. Sweet. I really want to see them. Uh, Josh is really good at that. Nicole too. We painted miniatures at uh, at Dragon Con last yeah. year. Nicole's turned out uh, amazing. I think she's got a she's got a knack for it. Cool. Well, I'd love to see some of those pictures too. I don't know if you want to put them up on the Facebook page or what, but or just send them to me. I'd love to see those. I don't have them, but I'll ask if I remember, which I won't, unfortunately. Um, I'll ask Nicole to send me photos of them. I'll send her a text message. I got Nicole's number. Ready, ready, to close, ready to close it out? Yeah, done? Right. yeah, I'm good. Thanks for listening, everybody. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, and SoundCloud. So you don't miss the next episode. It's probably going to be our Tomb of Horror special. Has anyone, no, one's, I don't feel, no one called us out on the fact that we didn't do the idiot. Jacob asked me, oh, like, okay. what happened to Tomb of Horrors? <laughs> I was like, well, that's going to be a long and complicated edit and everything process we're gonna need like another disclaimer and like an intermission special (laughs) so that's coming next monday it's going to be an ordeal it's going to be originally like i was like well let's do an hour and a half and then after an hour and a half like man they're not even like 10 percent into this or let's do a little bit longer let's do a little bit longer so it's about two and a half hours long what for we, that one episode. For that, for that one episode. So then I've and got. I can't wait. <laughs> well, and then we. And then, well, I don't know. That's the thing. I've, I've, as we were recording it, I was like, man, I am having so much fun playing this. But it's like, <laughs> oh, man, I don't know. This is going to be Is fun this going to gonna listen translate? To. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So we'll see. That's yeah. coming up on Monday. Uh, and then next Wednesday, we'll be doing the 22nd game. You know, it's uh, Pokemon Snap. Yep. Pokemon Snap. Mm, good one. You know what we still love, even though it has gone completely stagnant. What's that, Tyler? Five star iTunes reviews. Randy Johnson's. Oh, right. Yes. We love. <laughs> I love a good Randy Johnson. <laughs> I mean, who doesn't? And according to Phil and I, the Sandwich Lord Phil and I had this conversation and uh, asking him what he wants. What he wants at Tadpog Prom. He's like, "You want a Randy Johnson, Howard Johnson, Brandon Johnson? What do you want?" He's like, "No, I want a Reginald Bell Johnson." <laughs> I was like, "So, so the father from Family Matters." Yeah. Reginald Bell Johnson, uh-huh. that that could only be performed upon a female, <laughs> and that is where where you lick both both the, both the ass and the vagina. So rim vagina that's still Johnson. at the same time, uh, or or like a popsicle, you just get it all in one go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Kyle, I learned something today. <laughs> <you're doing. laughs> so to the added to the dad pug lexicon, the Reginald Bell Johnson. <laughs> Well, his life has already been destroyed by the character Steve Urkel. Why yep. not? Why not throw that on top of him? Uh, also, what's Paul playing today? He played this game. So, if you want to see what we're talking about with Dash Rendar and his mitten face, and <laughs> it looks like scrambled eggs on a mitten, <laughs> <laughs> clipping and blue screens and all sorts of fun. Mm-hmm. What's Paul playing today? Star Wars: Shadows of the Empire. But five star iTunes reviews. They've kind of dried up, but still going to push them. We still love them, and they still help. So if you want to throw pity on us, go in there. Give us a five-star written iTunes review. Helps us out a whole, whole lot. Makes us more. We're, we will come up in search terms, search checks, whatever, way more often. We'll get more hits. Get, get more those, hits. Get those iTunes hits, man. So, and we further try to sweeten that deal. There's a game you want us to play or a guest host you want on an episode. Include that in your five-star review, and we promise that we will get to that. Eventually. Eventually. Don't worry, guys. Like Tyler said, we're going to be back. We are maybe going to be playing D&D from the past. I don't know. Maybe. Um, I kind of feel like Wiley will be upset if we're not. Um, In the meantime, you can always find us on Tadpog.com. That's where the show notes live. And uh, that's where you can find all our back episodes. Um, Or SoundCloud. You can go to SoundCloud and find them there, too. Um, you can find us on Facebook. We are at facebook.com slash Tadpog. There's a lot of cool people there. They're doing a lot of cool shit. Uh, that is an excellent place to let us know how you feel about this particular episode. Uh, Tyler will make an episode post and just let us know how you felt about what we did to your favorite game. 
Shadows of the Empire. Because <laughs> I have a feeling that around 3 o'clock tomorrow, I'm going to look on Facebook and it's going to be like, oh, damn, there's 15 people who are regular listeners who are really mad that uh, <laughs> we just did not give Dash Rindar his his Reginald Johnson. <laughs> Take a huge dump on your favorite game. <laughs> You can also find us on Twitter. We are at Tadpog underscore podcast. Yes, it's cumbersome, I realize. Um, thank you for everybody on there who follows us and who retweets us. I especially want to give um, a special thanks to Leva, uh, who retweeted the hell out of us, uh, the episode that she was on, episode 203. Mm-hmm. Um so we really do appreciate it. And, of course, all the, the regulars uh, who retweet us um, and just generally tweet uh, at us because, as you know, that gives me something to read on the toilet at work. Um, <laughs> you can find us on um, some other places. There's SoundCloud, like I mentioned. We, we, um, we mentioned the Patreon. Uh, if you do feel like um, sending Wiley to the, the poorhouse, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash tadpog. It can be a game. Yeah. Bankrupt Wiley. Yeah. <laughs> Turn Wiley into cricket from It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. <laughs> Show me them dialars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. That, that should be our extra promotion, right? For every dollar you donate uh, to the to the Patreon, you get one Tadpog dialar. <laughs> <laughs> So it's not like it's an even exchange. This is like a freemium game. You give us your real your real money, we'll give you our fake money that you could use on I don't know something. <laughs> well, That's then, right. Two or three conversions, I'll forget it. <laughs> and then you get three friends to give you each one Tadpog Dialar, and they get three friends. <laughs> Uh, so check us out there if you want to. Um, you don't have to. Uh, Lord Dennis sent me a, a photograph the other day of a tip jar, I guess, that he saw at a coffee shop uh, that I think that we should totally steal for our Patreon. Uh, the sign read, uh, put the tip in, if it feel, see if it feels good. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you can call us if you want. If you want to be one of the wonderful people who calls us and gives us content to play on the show, uh, feel free to do so at 270-883-2555. Um, if it's a voicemail, try to keep it under three minutes if possible. Yeah, because we, we, we tapped that well and it went dry. So bombard us, please. That's that's it. That's all I got. Thanks again, Wiley. My pleasure. Thanks for having me on, guys. You bet, man. How do we want to close this out? Um, oh, wait a minute, Wiley. What's, well, our, what's our theme song? Moves by Sycamore Drive. Where can a tra- uh, link to that track be found? A link to that track can be found on the show notes at tedpog.com. All right. Now how do we want to close it out? We almost didn't ask him because we knew he that he knew the answer mm-hmm. to that question. Not because we just right. completely forgot. No, we didn't. No, we don't <laughs> it was, forget It was things. over so much confidence in one. Right. right. And glad to have been able to finally share an episode with the lovely Meg Holland as well. She was here for a second. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure she's already gone. She left again. Yeah, she left again. <laughs> Hmm. What do you think? What do you think? I mean, Star Wars character. Okay, do it as your favorite Star Wars character. Okay. From the expanded universe. From the expanded, <laughs> yes. I'm going to be Scourge. <laughs> I have a problem saying that word, by the way. I always have. Sco- scourge? I know it's Scourge. Scourge. But I always want to say Scourge. Scourge. Yeah. I ain't scared. All right. Sounds good. So until next time. Travel <laughs> Gold. I was trying to say mitten face dash rindar. <laughs> That's our new sign off. <laughs>